outside the club, right? Like that guy? No, it was like it's an actual song. This is what people are seeing. No. But and then people could also bounce on like slam. Yeah, yeah, but the leader of like the team, like usually this about them, right? And then he was he was at a club or something. So if you go over here, here one of the gang members, you see. Like that? Don't get out. One hand, 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 one hand,
I dropped off the thing.
Jane's Vega Church Friday before Christmas. Yes, that is true. Okay, so I'm going to just give you a couple of the updates because the next couple of services are a little bit different. So, Christmas Day is Friday. Normally we have service at 10, but we're going to just gather and celebrate together. Anybody that wants to come by, it's going to be Crazy Dave's Christmas Day, which means there's no rules, there's no regulation, there's no schedule. The only thing that involves friends, food, and fun. Literally, and fun. Yeah. And fun. It starts at 4 o'clock, and it's at it Dave, yeah, it involves Dave too. It goes to whenever. Come in, drop in, stay the whole time, stay part of the time. Come in after you've been with family, and be with more family. So it'll be a little bit different, not a regular service. It's all about to crazy day. And look guys, they let them out of the box. Woo! <laughs> spots in the box now. This is kind of cool, like the bigger the stage gets, the more people keep coming. It's just like in Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. I'm liking it. Wow. Eric and <laughs> So, here's the scoop. Next Friday, not Christmas Day Friday, sorry, the Friday after that is First Friday. So New Year's Day is First Friday. We will still do our regular service at 7. We'll still have our regular fantastic food after service. But in addition to that, at 2 o'clock, we'll start some prayer time up here. 3 o'clock, there will be a roaring fire going to keep us warm outside. To hang around, there will be some tasty vittles grilled up to pre-eat. Well, I guess once you eat, they're done. Okay, so we get to eat twice on New Year's Day. Woo, that's the way we're starting. Your New Year's Eve, uh, whatever that promises that to the break, you can start that the next day. So, we're going to be downstairs. We'll be up here praying from 2 to 3, and whenever that goes to. But downstairs, come anytime after 3. We'll be grilling, we'll be deep frying, We'll be doing all kinds of things to meet. Uh, our normal tea. Oh. And, oh my gosh, I should have grown So, um, here's the thing. <laughs> if you can, bring your own chair for downstairs. There's plenty of plenty of chairs up here, but downstairs, you get a folding chair, outdoor chair. Just bring it with you. Come hang out, have fun. And let's see. We do need two more helpers for child care. We've got some people that we're trying to rotate in because we'd love to get our child care people to be able to be in the service at least once a month. So if there's two more people, they don't need to be teachers, just helpers of the teachers. That would be awesome. You can see me or Stacy on your way out the door. There's some papers there. If you guys can all just sign that and put a small greeting onto each one of those. I don't want to say what it is because some people out there in the electronic world will be receiving. And Tuesday, we're going to start our gifts class. It's about gifts, our wiring, our what we're good at, and figuring out how we can apply it in life, in jobs, and at church. Like Christmas gifts? <sighs> Are you in the electronic world? That was our pastor asking if the gift class was about Christmas gifts. <sighs> and, oh, Saturday and Sunday, if anybody wants to help out, we're going to be moving like our garage and some of our other stuff, just a, a slight pre-move around 10 o'clock each day. If any, you know, if a couple of people want to come, that's awesome, but we're getting some of this stuff out of there. Because... The Sunday after Christmas, we have to do our final move. So that's actually all I can think of. We're not doing the regular what's on what day because nothing's normal this week coming up. Not that things are that normal at Broken Chains, anyways. But I am, normal. I am now tagging in my sister, Louise. Right in there. That's your thing. Ushers? May I have the ushers up to the front, please? Thank you. So now it's 
time for tithes and offerings. And Lord God, we thank you so much, Lord, for how good truly you are to us, Lord. You are a good God. You are a faithful God. And Lord God, the joy of you, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So no matter how you feel tonight, if you feel a little just tired and just down, just give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to the Lord and say, you, Lord God, are my maker. You are my refuge. You, Lord God, are the lifter of my head. And I look up to you where my help comes from. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you give us, Lord. We're giving back to you, Lord God. We're giving back to you. And Lord God, we do know, according to thy word, when we give, and we give with a joyful, joyful heart, it is always given back. Pressed down, shaken, pouring over. You're going to be blessed. My brothers and sisters, I can tell you you're going to be blessed. Have the faith and trust in God. Don't even question. Even if you think you can't pay that bill, give it. Watch what happens. Watch how God moves in your life. And I pray that all of you will receive that in your hearts and know that your God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, ushers. In Jesus' name, amen. Shame. Yep. No shame. Yep. 
And God wants us to come to Him innocent before Him. Yes. The Bible reads, you know, I can turn to this Bible anywhere and I got hot things highlighted so I don't have to like know where I'm going. I just know it's good. <laughs> First Corinthians 9, 24, it says, Do you not know that those who run a race all run? But only one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercise self-control in all things. Then they do it to receive a perishable wealth. But we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not just beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Lord, God, what does that mean? That means we all have a goal in mind. And it's not a goal that is, is, is for wealth. It's not a goal to just be secure. It's bigger than that. But what is a hundred years compared for all eternity? Amen. Amen. What is it? Just a hundred years and you're eternity, eternity with Jesus forever. You're, this is just a fleeting memory. So let's, what we're doing right now is building our faith to where we're going to go tonight. Sometimes our faith is covered with dirt and we got to have to like blow out the dirt so our faith may rise and we believe that God is real and that God is here and that he's working, that He is right next to you and that he's alive and he's not dead. Hallelujah.
history. Take you back to 19... What? 68? 68. 68. Is that the word you were there? Yeah. Somewhere over there? I hope so. We're going to do something fun. It's always fun. There's that cape over there before. Hey, Anna, what are you going to do? You know the song right now, right? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give it an intro. You gotta do an intro, Dan. Why are you doing a song? I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna 
practice and was like, bro, he was like, you want to do a song? I was like, I'm not singing it. <laughs> We're gonna do a Christmas song here. Yeah.
so the second word is, oh Louise, Bonnie brought you a Christmas present. It's orange flavor. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie's awesome. <laughs> like pretty much everyone else at Broken Chains, Mike and Jersey. Yeah. I know you guys, there's a few of you last minute shoppers out here. And uh, these amazing beverage containers can hold hot beverages and coke. For a small nominal donation to your church, you could have gifts for all your friends yes. and family. Yes. Not only that, they would say, say, this broken chains biker jersey seems like a place for me, amen? Amen. So, see someone out front and get a fabulous decanter, <laughs> a travel mug, spill-free, child protective, what's that called? Child resistant, that's what it is. Child approved. Flathead home approved. Hey, man. Look, um, also, we just, one of the things that we do is we try to keep you guys equipped with um, information to give to people. We just got another case of these Book of Hope Road editions. And these are great to give to folks that need to find out about how much they're loved by Jesus. Uh, also, the Bible in a year. When Eric was talking earlier, he was talking about how we sometimes slip away from reading the Word, sometimes slip away from filling up our spirit, sometimes just kind of slip away. Uh, I saw a string on Facebook earlier about how depressing the season can be. And you know what? It can be if you allow it to get to you. Or it can be joyous and amazing in a time of wonder and praising Jesus. And the, and the difference is how we do it. And when you do it, it's being on the earth. I'm talking about this is an amazing time of year when we celebrate the arrival of our magnificent Savior and King, Jesus. Amen? Amen. So I'm stoked about it. Anybody who was on that depression link, I understand. I understand, because I've often dealt with seasonal depression and all that stuff. It's a spiritual battle. And, and I also want you to know there's hope. That Jesus is our great healer. Yes, he He's the one who fills us with hope and joy, and a joy of a future. Something that we've never experienced before is right here at our very fingertips. It will just step into his presence. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, this coming year, for 2016, one of our things we're going to be praying on, and one of the themes for 2016, is we're going to believe for greater things. And been like I was for those first few songs, man, the Holy Spirit was so thick in here, I was weeping in the presence of the living God, and I just want to practice the presence of God. Yeah. This coming year for me is going to be very different than any year in my life, yeah. because I, I've, right. I've been prompted by the Holy Spirit to seek His presence, and maybe forsake all the other stuff yes. that keeps me busy, mm -hmm. like Murder, She Wrote, and... <laughs> Chips and chips. Chips and no, that's a different But there's all this stuff that, that we let sneak into our lives. And one of the greatest challenges that I have is a, as a pastor is to figure out what is important to you, Lord. Because you know what? I don't want to chase anything else but your will, amen? Yeah. This church is has been percolating revival amen. since we started. Yes. And it's been growing, and I'm believing for revival. And I want you to understand what revival is. Revival is when people walk into a place and they say, something's going on here. I sense the presence and the spirit of God. I feel like I just got to unburden myself. I feel like I want to lay down... In a big revival, in really big ones, people come up with their porn, their drugs, their nasty stuff, and they lay it at the altar in yes. repentance, and they cry out, God, forgive me. Yes. Jesus, forgive me. Be my Lord and my Savior. Be my King. And in revival, the Spirit of the living God gets on us so much that we can no longer resist Him. We just got to come up and empty our pockets of all the sin stuff and get on our face yes. before Jesus and say, I just want to be yours. Yes. Yeah! So I'm believing for that size revival. I'm looking forward to having a pile, well, I, this is a weird thing to say in church, but a pile of porn and a pile of drugs and a pile of 
yes. and ring you. Yes. I'm looking forward to having yes. all that Love crap yes. that we allow ourselves to be sucked into, yes. to be laid on the altar yes. before yes. Jesus Christ and be cleansed yes. and filled with the Holy Spirit yes. that will yes. yes. I don't know what you're believing for in 2016, but I believe it. that addiction is broken. Yes. But if I keep myself busy with good stuff, it may not be from God. Anyway, Pastor Brad Whipple has put out this little quote from Proverbs. Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. I was just talking to Mike about it. When we're struggling with addiction, we know lots of people that have struggled with addiction. I struggled and I'm an overcomer. Yeah. And when we struggle, I can't tell you how many times I've dealt with someone in addiction who said, I'm just going to figure it out for myself. Dude, you, you've already reaped that harvest. What you ought to do is see if someone will come along and hold your hand and say, here's how to stay sober and clean. And then do what they say. I used to talk to my son and my daughters, and they, they, he's 13 years old, they're like, well, I asked all my friends what I should do. So the highest advice you can possibly get is of a 13-year-old. I'm just saying, there's probably someone who's been there. Our son Rob was not here tonight, but I wish he was. But um, he was he had gone to a, a detox at some point in his struggle. And he went to this detox, fully planning to go to Teen Challenge. But while he was there, repeat detoxers said, no, dude, that doesn't work. Follow us. <laughs> and he went to jail some more. Because um, he followed the opinions of people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right. Great news, he's been sober and clean over yeah. two years now. Woo! And he and uh, Alexandra are a great, great story of success. Our grandson, Caden, came from them. Two people who were told they were going to be nothing but a worthless junkie all their lives now are sober, yes. clean, and building yeah. a family. The more I thought about this, I thought about how many of us just want to air our own opinions rather than understanding what the Lord is trying to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see this through Facebook all the time. Any Democrats in the crowd? <laughs> Go ahead, you can raise your hand. I won't yell at you. <laughs> any, any Republicans in the crowd? Go ahead, I won't yell at you. 
See, you really can't com convince a Democrat not to be a Democrat. And there, you can't convince a Republican not to be a Republican. It just isn't going to happen. Because we've become entrenched in our beliefs and we look at the world through that lens. I don't really care where you are with that, but think about how you do this with Jesus the same way. You get entrenched into thinking of the world, and all the while the Lord's saying, let me cleanse, let me get that junk out of you, man. And that's why you come to church. So we've been, uh, if Hebrews 12 was really striking me this week uh, from our Bible road trip. That was from, I think it was from yesterday, right? Yeah, it was from yesterday. And um, so I want to read you some of Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 12 says, So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Ouch. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. I, I'd like to add something. We're not supposed to add the scripture, but I feel like I want to comment here and put in a dot, dot, dot. Because they are measuring Christ by your actions. Going through a hard time, people are measuring Christ by how you deal with yes. that. Going through a tough time, maybe you've slipped away for a couple of weeks like Eric's saying, people are measuring Christ by our actions. Now we know that we're covered by grace. We know that the Lord's given us grace, but grace doesn't mean I've got a license to go behave badly. Yeah, that's right. Amen. It means I've got a license to come to the throne of Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. Amen. I have an open door policy with Jesus Christ. No matter what I've done this week, last week, last month, last year, blah, 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 whatever I'm thinking about doing tomorrow, I, because the blood of Christ has covered me, because I've asked him to be my Lord and my Savior, I can enter into him at any time and say, dude, i got to get some stuff off of me, because I'm not honoring you and I want to be yours. In Hebrews 12, 14, it goes on to say, work at living in peace with everyone. And work at living a holy life, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other, so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. In the John Bevere study, The Bait of Satan, it talks very specifically and deeply about the root of bitterness, the spirit of offense, the, the way that gets in us. And we start in, and Democrats and Republicans, right now, you've got a lot to say to each other, and you're offended with each other. And that's like Satan's playground. Yes. Oh, yeah. And our, our yeah. duty yeah. is to have Jesus first. Amen. Amen. You know, yeah. Our, our nation's in trouble. There's no two ways about it. But the only way our nation's going to be saved and changed is through Jesus Christ. It's through revival. That's the only way. And if our leaders would turn their lives to Christ and be who God's called them to be, no matter what their label was, they'd be voting in ways and doing things that honor the Lord, not themselves or their own pocketbooks. It goes on in 16, make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. Now listen to this, it says, you know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. I never heard that, that same way. And it was too late for repentance even though he begged with bitter tears. For any of us, we do have a birthright through Jesus Christ. But the day our eyes close and that last breath wheezes out of our empty body, our spirit is going to either rejoice in the presence of the Lord or be begging through bitter tears that we had one more chance to turn our life to Jesus Christ. In 18 it says, you have not come to a physical mountain, to a place flaming fire, darkness, gloom, and a whirlwind as the Israelites did at Mount Sinai 
For they heard an awesome trumpet blast and a voice so terrible they begged God to stop speaking. They staggered back under God's command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. Moses himself was so frightened at the sight, he said, I'm terrified and trembling. But now, new covenant believers, no, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, to the countless thousands of angels in joyful gathering. This is you. You gathering with those angels. When we're rejoicing and worshiping Jesus, we're gathering with those angels. See, you come to assemble, you come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven, whose names are in the book of life, that if we've turned our life to Jesus Christ and asked for forgiveness of our sins and repented and made him Lord over our life and our choices, that our names are in the book of life. You have come to God himself, who's the judge over all things. You've come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven, and you've now been made perfect. You've come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people, and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks of forgiveness, instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel did. The blood of Abel cried out when Cain killed him, and God said, where is your brother? And he said, is, am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> But the blood of Abel cried out, and Cain was punished. In verse 25, it says, Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. That's, yes, be careful to listen to what your pastor says. That actually is a very important principle. I, I want to make it clear to you that if your pastors have something in their spirit that they feel they need to talk with you about, please, for your sake, please pay attention. Amen. We know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to refuse it, that's on you. But this scripture is saying, be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who's speaking, the one who's speaking, the Holy Spirit that's speaking to us all the time. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, their earthly messenger, mm -hmm. We will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth, but now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed, so that only unshakable things will remain. Is there anybody unshakable in the house? Because we need to be unshakable in our faith. We need to be unshakable in our knowing. We're going to be unshakable in knowing the presence of God and knowing who He thinks he, that we are. Mm -hmm. And since we're receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worship, worshiping Him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. God is so awesome. Thank you, Jesus, just for His words. Thank you. And I'm praying about these words, and you know it's a communion night tonight, and we're going to celebrate communion. And, and I went with a kind of a brief message tonight because these words were burned on me. And on Hebrews 12 comes right after Hebrews 11, which is the faith chapter. We see how people live by faith, and so we're encouraged in that. But then this is the oh by the way chapter. Chapter 12 was uh, hello McFly. Please listen to me. <laughs> So tonight we're going to have a communion service, um, and somewhere in this communion, uh, uh, the, uh, the Spirit of God has really been on me that I know that there's some people that gave testimonies last week when Deb was preaching, Pastor Deb was preaching, and uh, there was a number of people who left saying, oh, I should have got up. Mm. And I know there's people that want to say what the Lord has done in their life. And they may want to confess where they came from and rejoice on who they are in Jesus Christ. So 
When that time comes, I'll let you know, and we'll open up the mic for people to be able to share what the Lord is doing and has done, because by the word of our testimony, see, others will know that the Lord has done something, that he's real. Yeah. Are there any people that were formerly addicted and now are not? Yeah. Yeah. Any people that were addicted to drugs or booze or whatever? That we're free, because in Christ we're free indeed. So tonight we're going to take communion. And I want, to, I want you to understand how communion works in this church. You don't have to fill out any forms. You don't have to know the secret handshake. You don't have to do any special stuff. You don't have to go to the class that teaches you how to take the wafer in the not wine, but pretend wine. What you have to do is come to the Lord Jesus Christ with a repentant heart and celebrate the Passover. Because in Christ we've been passed over yeah. by the angel of death. Mm -hmm. We've been passed over by the misery of this world. Yeah. And so when we take communion, we're celebrating that Passover. That's where communion comes from, is the Passover. That's why we use matzah, that unleavened bread. So as we celebrate the work of our Lord and Savior during this communion service, think back 2,000 years ago to the first, the very first Lord's Supper. And we celebrate today in much the same manner as they did long ago. They were in an upper room, we're in an upper room. <laughs> we're all hiding from the Romans, no. <laughs> So we celebrate today in much the same manner. And then come, come as we delve deeper into the celebration that all believers are commanded to partake of communion on a regular basis. We started doing this once a month because I really felt convicted that I had failed in holding up communion as a truly righteous and important part of our worship. As we look into the communion, we're going to look at three different perspectives. The past, the present, and the future. <clears throat> Excuse me. What Jesus did for us is of eternal importance. The importance spans the past, to the present, and into the future. And tonight, we're going to look at the Lord's Supper from all three perspectives. See, communion in the past... When we think about the past, the past is always behind us. We can't change a lick of it. But it can guide us towards the future. We can learn from our successes as well as our failures. Do not, be, do not let the past paralyze us. The words of Scripture are just as applicable to us today as they were when the Apostle Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 11. But in the following instructions, I cannot praise you, for it sounds as if more harm than good has been done when you meet together. First, I hear that there are divisions among you when you meet as a church. And to some extent, I believe it. But of course, there must be divisions among you, so that you who have God's approval will be recognized. That's not an approval of division, but it is an explanation when there is division, if there's a division in a group, there'll be fruit in one place or the other, but not usually both. Mm -hmm. When there's division, we'll see, it's like a vine, if a grapevine grows and then touches the ground, it'll create new roots. And those new roots, the old vine can die, but the new vine comes back to life. Mm -hmm. And where there's fruit, there's life. Mm -hmm. When you meet together, you're not really interested in the Lord's Supper. For some of you are in a hurry to eat your own meal without sharing with others. And as a result, some go hungry while others get drunk. What? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking? Or do you really want to disgrace God's church and shame the poor? What am I supposed to say? Do you want me to praise you? Well, I certainly will not praise you for this. Now, when he says things like you got drunk, we know that they served real wine. 
And we also know that communion was a meal, kind of like First Friday. <laughs> Big fan. It was a whole meal, but there was a bunch of people going up and hogging all the food. And this is why we have servers, so that the servers will regulate our portions and the food will make it through the night. Otherwise, people like me might pile a mountain of food onto our plate and say, oh, Frank, sorry, man. Yeah. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took a cup of wine after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new salvation, the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Now listen. So anyone who eats the bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord,